At the coming of Christ, the wicked are blotted from the face of the whole earth, consumed with the spirit of his mouth and destroyed by the brightness of his glory. Christ takes his people to the city of God, and the earth is emptied of its inhabitants. It appears like a desolate wilderness, foretelling the banishment of Satan and earth's desolation. The revelator declares that this condition will exist for a thousand years. After presenting the scenes of the Lord's second coming, and the destruction of the wicked, the prophecy continues. I saw, an, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon and the old serpent, and that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him in, into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive uh, the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season the expression bottomless pit represents the earth in a state of confusion and darkness concerning the condition of the earth in the beginning the bible the bible the bible record says that it was that it was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Prophecy teaches that it will be brought back, partially at least, to this condition. It here is to be the home of Satan with his evil angels for a thousand years. Limited, limited to the earth, he will not have access to other worlds to tempt and annoy those who have never fallen. It is in this sense that he is that he is bound none remain upon whom he can exercise his power even the wicked are now placed beyond the power of satan and alone with his evil angels he remains to see the effect of the curse which sin has brought for a thousand years satan will wander to and fro in the desolate earth to behold the results of his rebellion against the law of god during this time, his sufferings are intense. Now deprived of his power, he is left to contemplate the part which he has acted since he first rebelled against the government of heaven and to look forward with terror to the dreadful future when he must suffer for all the evil he has done and to be punished for the sins that he has instigated. During the thousand years between the first and second resurrection, the judgment of the wicked takes place. Paul points to this judgment as an event that follows the second advent. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Daniel declares that when the Ancient of Days came, judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. At this time, the righteous reign as kings and priests unto God. John in the Revelation says, I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. It is, it is at this time that as foretold by Paul, the saints, the saints shall judge the world. In union with Christ, they judge the wicked comparing the acts with the, with the statute book, the Bible, and deciding every case according to the deeds done in the body. Then, Then the portion which the wicked must suffer is meted out according to their works and is recorded against their names in the book of death. Satan also and evil angels are judged by Christ and his people. Know ye not that we shall judge angels, the angels which kept not their faith, which kept not first the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment 
of the great day. At the close of the thousand years, the second resurrection will take place. Then the wicked will be raised from the dead and appear before God for the execution of the judgment written. Thus, the Reverend later, after describing the resurrection of the righteous, says the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. 